Good morning, and welcome to St. John's on the second Sunday after Pentecost. I'm the Reverend Gia Hayes-Martin, the Rector of St. John's. A special welcome to anyone who's a guest of St. John's this morning. We're glad you're here, and we hope you find something in this community that feeds your soul. If you're worshiping on YouTube and you'd like the link to worship on Zoom, please fill out the form on the Contact Us section of our website, stjohnsworthington.org. Our service this morning is anti-communion. You will need either the order of worship or a copy of the Book of Common Prayer. Links to the orders of worship are posted on our website and they're also in the Friday emails to the parish. To help us all to focus on worship and minimize distractions, I ask you to please keep yourself muted throughout the service unless you're reading a lesson or leading prayers. We'll have time to chat after our service. Now let us enter into a brief moment of silence as we prepare to worship God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty Take all 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the garden to, to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. The Lord God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to me be with me. She gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and plenteous redemption. Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. More than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. With the Lord there is mercy and plenteous redemption. A reading from Second Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, 
I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus we raise us also with Jesus, and we bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. 
And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. family. That word might bring up all kinds of positive associations for you. And I'm glad for you if that's the case. I'll be honest. Family is not a word that makes me feel all warm and gooey inside, like I've been transported into a greeting card. My parents and sister are pretty great. You'll meet them sometime. But the rest of my family is in a different story. It has been over a decade since I've had any contact with one side of my extended family. The effects of alcoholism and emotional abuse made it too hurtful to stay in relationship with them. Breaking off those connections was not a decision I made lightly. It was really painful for me. It still hurts my mom, but I needed that separation for some healing to happen. It turns out that family is not a warm, gooey word for many people, perhaps even most people. Families have great power to create intimacy, and that very closeness gives family bonds great power to wound us, too. Those bonds can be strained by political or religious differences, fractured by abuse, broken by death or divorce. Many families seem to be unable to love unconditionally. Perhaps no one knows this better than the many LGBTQ people who have strained or broken relationships with their families just because of who they are. The distance between the greeting card ideal that everybody is supposed to have and reality makes it all the more painful. My experience has been that no matter how much time passes, the wish for things to be different never really goes away. The grief for what could have been and should have been is always there, and you gradually learn to live with it. Jesus knew about that. It's early on in Mark's gospel. Jesus is not far into his public ministry, but he's done enough teaching and preaching and healing that crowds are starting to follow him. His family hears about this, and they think something must be wrong. This isn't the Jesus they know. They conclude that Jesus must be out of his mind. They find him to restrain him, take control of him, take charge of him. Mark is ambiguous about their reasons, and I choose to believe that they're doing this out of care for Jesus. His family loves him. They think something is wrong with him. They want to care for him and restore him to his right mind. But they fail to understand Jesus. They can't recognize that this, 
this traveling holy man who preaches and heals and casts out unclean spirits because that is the mission God has given him. This is who Jesus truly is. His family's failure to accept Jesus for who he is gives ammunition to his enemies, the scribes. Jesus' family may mean well, but they've unintentionally aligned themselves with his opponents. Their misguided efforts to care for him are actively holding him back from his mission. And that's a problem because Jesus' mission is urgent. The mental world of Mark's gospel is a cosmic battle between God and Satan, the personification of those forces opposed to God. Jesus is engaged in that battle. The unclean spirits, the minions of Satan, they know perfectly well what Jesus is up to. Throughout Mark's gospel, only the unclean spirits recognize that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, sent to destroy them. Jesus says that weird line that no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. That's difficult to understand. It's one of those verses that we may pass over because we don't know what it's talking about. But that is the heart of Mark's gospel. That is Jesus describing his mission. Satan, the strong man, has claimed the earth as his house. Jesus is working to tie up Satan, subdue the unclean spirits, so that the forces of God can come in and rule. Jesus is clearing the way for the kingdom of God to break into this world. The kingdom is near. It is already on its way. And Jesus doesn't have weeks or years to argue with his family or explain what he is doing until they agree with him. He's got a strong man to tie up. Maybe someday his family will accept him for who and what he is. But for now, at least, he needs to step away from those relationships. In place of those bonds of blood, Jesus creates a new family. Whoever does the will of God is his brother and sister and mother. Maybe someday his family of origin will decide to do the will of God, too. That door stands open for them. But Jesus chooses to make a new family now, with the people who can love, accept, and support him in a way that his family of origin cannot yet. This family of choice allows Jesus to do and be what God has given him to do. They may not recognize that he is the Messiah, but they accept him as he truly is, and they give him the support he needs to do the difficult work of binding the strong man. I can picture this chosen family standing at the door as Jesus leaves in the morning, handing him his lunch and saying, stay hydrated, eat vegetables, we love you and we're proud of you. Jesus needed to hear that as much as any human being does. At their best, faith communities can be that family of choice. I need to add a couple of very large caveats to what I'm about to say. In many families, you have to be born into it to be a real member. And that is a dangerous model for any church. We are supposed to be sharing the good news of God in Christ with those who haven't heard it and continually incorporating new people into the household of God. We have to let new people in or we're not being the church. And as many of us know, our families of origin may have taught us some really unhealthy patterns of behavior. My extended family wins the gold medal in passive aggression. Describing our church as a family is an invitation to bring all those destructive patterns with us into our church relationships. So when I say families, faith communities can be a family of choice, I mean they can be a family as long as their boundaries are permeable enough to welcome new members with enthusiasm and they are striving to be healthier than many families of origin. So with those caveats, at their best, 
faith communities can be that family of choice. The parish where I became an Episcopalian, St. Anne's in Nashville, Tennessee, had a member named Ernest. He was at least in his mid 80s, maybe older. His wife had died and they had not had children. One Sunday, the rector shared with us that Ernest's sister had died. He had had 11 siblings and now he was the only one left. She said simply, we are his family now. Lutheran pastor Nadia Bowles Weber's church, House for All Sinners and Saints in Denver, was founded as a community for people who would look and feel and be out of place in any other church. Heavily tattooed young adults before tattoos were cool, recovering addicts, people who'd been living on the streets. When what they thought of as normal people began joining, it was a crisis point for them. They had a parish meeting about it, and one member, Asher, said, as the young transgender kid who was welcomed this, this, into this community, I just want to go on the record and say that I'm really glad that there are people at church now who look like my mom and dad because I have a relationship with them that I just can't with my own mom and dad. When there is no one else, when our own families can't love us the way we need them to, we can be that for each other. We can be the ones at the door handing over lunch and saying, stay hydrated, eat vegetables, we love you and we're proud of you. Who are those people in your life? The chosen family bound together by a commitment to doing the will of God. How can we be that for each other? How are, are we already doing it? And what more do we need to do? And how can we reach out from St. John's with the unconditional love of God to invite others into this community? The ones who need to hear just as much as Jesus did, as much as we do, we love you. We're proud of you. Here's your lunch. We affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, 
that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray especially for those for whom prayers have been asked. Phil and Elaine, Nicholas, Lee, Bob and family, James, Cynthia, Jerry, Russell, Tim and family, Linda, Bostwick and family, Dolores, Joe, Dawn, Rebecca, Bob, Lauren, Claudia and Kent, Bob and Anne. We pray for our servicemen and women and all first responders. We pray for all those affected by the coronavirus pandemic here and throughout the world. For those who are unemployed or underemployed, we pray for all who experience fear or exclusion. We pray for those in prison or bondage, in body or in spirit. We pray for the departed, especially Diana Vanek, mother of Brian and Kevin. We give thanks for the life of Monroe Dowling Sr. and for the people of St. John's and for their ministries. We pray for those having birthdays this week, Ruby, Donna, Ava, Jean, Brian, and Thomas. Please join me in the birthday prayer. Oh God, God. Our times, Our times are in your hands. hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what what we have have done and and by by what we have have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Good morning again. A couple of announcements to highlight today. This evening is our final Celtic service of the summer uh, before that service goes on its summer vacation. This month's theme is celebrating the vitality of life. The service will be held outdoors in the northeast corner of the churchyard along 161 at five o'clock tonight. The weather is supposed to be hot and dry, so please dress appropriately for that. Vacation Bible School begins tomorrow evening and continues on Mondays in June. As our children and the adult leaders gather, I ask you to please keep them in your prayers that as they explore this year's theme, the light of Christ colors our world, they may know the light of Jesus Christ. The memorial service for Jane Kuntz, a beloved member of St. John's will be this Saturday, June 12th at 11 a.m. with calling hours beginning at 10 o'clock. New Hope Church in Powell, where Jane's daughter is a member, is graciously hosting this service. I will officiate. And the address of New Hope is in the announcements that were emailed out on Friday. So that service is this Saturday, the 12th at 11 a.m. There's much more going on at St. John's, so please read the announcements that were emailed out on Friday. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.